a joint, it's important to think of the acronym PRICE. PRICE is made up of the presence of pain, range of motion, instability, crepitus, and effusion. We start the pelvic limb by palpating four of these in a standing position. Position the patient so the weight is evenly distributed, and then behind the patient, feel for the presence of muscle atrophy in the, in the quadriceps, the hamstrings, the calves, and feel for discrepancy between the left and right sides. The same applies for the pelvic musculature, gluteals, are also an important area to palpate. Palpating for stifle effusion requires placing one's fingers on the medial aspect of the joint and palpating simultaneously to determine if there is any pouching or soft water balloon type feel to the joints. The presence of medial buttress is not effusion, but thickening of the joint capsule attachment to the tibia and it should also be noted. When palpating the stifle joint, it's important to feel patella position as, far to, as part of the patellofemoral exam. By taking the weight slightly off the patient, isolating the patella, one is able to put medial pressure, lateral pressure to determine the presence of a subluxation or luxation. It can be helpful to mobilize the distal limb and use a combination of inter-external and internal rotation with the different patellar motions. When checking the stifle further, range of motion is important. Dogs should have a full flexion where the tip of their hock is able to contact the back of their thigh and do that comfortably. With extension, isolating the knee and then placing the stifle into full extension and maintaining that position allows you to check for the presence of hyperextension discomfort, which is very important in partial cruciate injury. Once the limb is in this offloaded position, it's a good idea to check for medial instability, lateral instability, the degree of internal rotation and any discomfort during that exam, and also cranial thrust can be determined. By placing my right hand around the stifle, my finger on top of the tibial crest, and the butt of my finger resting on the patella, I'm able to flex the stifle and look for any sign of cranial motion of the tibia. That can be done with the knee in external rotation, neutral, and internal rotation. The other aspect of this test is it should be formed with, performed with the knee in slight flexion, standing position, and more extension, as, this can, as the results can vary with stifle position. Once the stifle has been evaluated, we then move down to the distal limb. When palpating the foot, it's important that a complete feel of each digit is performed with concurrent palpation of the metatarsal phalangeal joint. The degree of digit flexion, extension, and the presence of any instability or bowing of the digits in relationship to the metatarsals comprises a thorough examination of the PES. When examining the hock, it's important that weight is placed on the foot and palpation, particularly in the caudal compartments, laterally and medially, for joint effusion is performed. Thickening of the joint in the cranial aspect can also be present. Effusion can be more difficult to palpate in this area. When examining the hock, it's important to look for range of motion, full extension, and 
full flexion. There should be comfortable range of motion. Stability of the hock is palpated in both full extension, medially, laterally tested, partial flexion, medially and laterally tested to look for collateral instability. The Achilles mechanism is evaluated with the foot weight bearing and feel for a nice clean both myotendinous junction, tendon run and attachment site on the calcaneus. Swelling, thickening or pain on palpation of the common calcaneal tendon insertion site is an issue. When examining the hip joint, it's important to provide good support to the patient and allow them to feel secure by flexion of the hip joint and full extension of the hip joint, it's possible to see if that joint is in within normal limits. Extension of the hip joint can sometimes be poorly tolerated in nervous dogs, dogs who have concurrent lumbosacral or caudal lumbar issues, and in dogs with hip pathology. It's important to differentiate between those different areas. The hip joint can also be assessed with abduction of the hip and concurrent palpation over the greater trochanter and the hip which lie joint itself which lies directly dorsal to this area. Crepitus, popping and or subluxation can be felt in some patients. When palpating for luxation of a hip, palpation of the greater trochanter, the ischial tuberosity, and in particular the space between where the sciatic nerve runs and where there should be a good gap is important. That gap is obliterated with external rotation of the femur, forcing your finger or thumb out of that space. That's an easy way to detect for hip luxation. 